In today's video I will show you a few tips and tricks about how to deal with the unknown. So in MSK Radiology we frequently encounter findings that we really have not an immediate idea of what it could be. So it's kind of an unknown finding and we have to then find out what it could be, what's like the worst case, what's the best case and give the referring physician some kind of direction where he should go further with additional examinations or testing etc. Now in this video we will focus on one particular case but the same principles apply on any uh, unknown finding basically and if you apply these regularly it will certainly improve your reporting speed. So this is the unknown case and we have a 60 year old patient with this swelling here on the dorsum of his foot just in front of the ankle joint and the referring physician uh, wrote in his request that there is an ulcer and clinically it's infected and he wants to rule out some kind of a sarcoma or tumor or whatever in this region. So what we did was just this MRI and now it's a very strange location. Uh, it seems to be this swelling down here in the subcutaneous tissue. The underlying structures here seem okay. Extensor tendons, nothing really obvious. Then the extensor retinaculum, nicely seen here, has some contact to this stuff here. Then we have this swelling and edema in the subcutaneous tissue here and here a little darker uh, area with less signal intensity and this is a term sequence. Now if we scroll laterally we can at some point see the defect in the skin. So here we have some ulcer but the mass seems to be more a little bit more medially or laterally in fact. So we don't have an obvious mass which is clearly depicted. I can also show you the T1 after gadolinium. It's more like a diffuse enhancement. We don't have any sharp borders no clear depiction of any kind of a mass or involvement of the deep structure. So we have a very diffuse process here. Now, if we look at the T2 sequence, we can see it's very dark in signal intensity and that's already one of the diagnostic clues in this case. So coming to a differential diagnosis for any kind of unknown lesion, the broad categories uh, are the following and you can uh, use this mnemonic here. These are like the broad categories that you can see that should comprise most if not all differential diagnosis in any circumstance. So we have vascular lesions, inflammatory lesions, tumors, degenerative changes, idiopathic, congenital, autoimmune or anatomic variants, traumatic, endocrine and metabolic stuff. Now, just based on our case here, we can rule out certain findings. So it's certainly not congenital because the patient developed this new. Um, so we can exclude that one. Then um, it shouldn't be like an anatomic variation or an autoimmune reaction or allergic reaction of any kind. That would be very, very unlikely. And it's not degenerative in the meaning. It's not like a joint that is just degenerated because it's an old patient. The endocrine differential is in normally in the radiology world, not in the on the top anyways. So we have reduced our potential diagnosis quite a lot already. And if we go back to the lesion now here and we pull up the term sequence, we don't have the impression that it's actually a vascular lesion. We can try to see this here on a T1. We see the arteries, etc. It's more like a diffuse process. We don't have any fluid levels. We don't see any flowoids, no vessels, etc. etc. So a vascular lesion is also very unlikely. Therefore, we exclude that one too. Uh, we know from history it's not idiopathic or like iatrogenic, but Potentially it could be depending on the history, but in this case, no. So for example, if the referring physician, he has an alcus or an ulcer here, and then he starts poking around, doing crazy stuff, injecting maybe some stuff. I don't know, we could potentially get something like this, but this was not the case in this case. So therefore iatrogenic is out of the picture. And the patient did not have a trauma, like an acute trauma. So this just leaves us with these three broad differential categories. So now if we reduced our differentials, we then have to make sure that we basically make sure it's not the worst case scenario. So what could be the worst case scenario in this case here, six year old patient? And well, 
you can argue about this, but I think one of the worst case scenarios would be a very, very aggressive tumor, like a sarcoma, soft tissue sarcoma, with this, with this kind of a diffuse enhancement, potentially needing a amputation of the whole foot if that's uh, not otherwise treatable. So that would be kind of the worst case scenario for the patient. One of the other not so good scenarios would be like a severe infection, like a very aggressive infection where the patient has also the risk of losing his foot or having just a very aggressive infection that potentially could affect all of the rest of the body. So these are kind of the two major differential diagnosis that would have the most impact. Now it could be like a more benign tumor, but it doesn't look like one. So that's also not very, very likely. Infectious, it, it can also be just a super infected process of any other kind. So we don't really uh, can exclude infection, especially because we have this ulcer here. Uh, I think we saw it here and maybe there is even more over here. So we have an ulcer, it's clinically infected. So this might make things even more complicated because we now have to deal with two simultaneous ongoing processes. So we probably have some underlying process which is super infected. It doesn't look like just infection because we don't see an abscess like at all. If you go back to the fluid sensitive sequence here, we don't see any abscess, the fluid or what you would expect from just a simple infection would look more like this. So no abscess formation, etc. And also the it seems to be really expanding here. So we have some kind of a, a mass anyways, which is potentially super infected because of the clinical information and the defects in the skin. So going back to this one here, what could it be from a metallic metabolic point of view now? With something like this, and especially if we look at the T2 sequence, and we can see that the signal is very low on T2, and that is quite an important finding because there are not so many things that actually provide us with a very low T2 signal. So the first thing that comes to mind would be some kind of a fibrotic process. Fibrosis is very unspecific. It can be uh, reactive, degenerative, um, just there are some tumors that are very low signal intensity and then we should always think also about gout and the other thing is amyloid depositions that can also have a very low T2 signal intensity. So in the end my first uh, or my differentials were then either it could be some kind of a fibrotic process super infected it could also be gout, very atypical gout, but still because just because of the T2 signal or amyloid deposition, these were kind of the more prominent differential diagnosis and a tumor or sarcoma was more in the background and we suggested doing, uh, first of all, a dual energy CT just to make sure that we are not dealing with some kind of gout and you can see here the dual energy CT was completely normal with this regard. So we don't have any gout depositions there. We have some depositions at other locations, but this here is certainly not gout. Uh, we didn't have any other hints that the patient should have or could have amyloid depositions there. And eventually we recommended biopsy. And the result was some uh, vessel rich fat and soft tissue with some fibrosis and some focal degenerated tissue components with myxoid components. So that was an excision biopsy. Now they then uh, interpreted this finding within the spectrum of prurigo nodularis or lichen simplex chronicus and thought that it's potentially just a mechanical reaction of the soft tissue. Like, so we have some chronic friction, maybe f some kind of shoe that eventually led to this kind of process going on there. But certainly there was no evidence of malignancy or neoplastic process going on. Ultimately, what was also very helpful in going forward and saying that this was not a malignant process was that just coincidentally, we had a few similar cases shortly before that. And you can see this one here similar location, interestingly, uh, also very uh, prominent swelling, focal swelling here with very dark signal intensity here, just 
again next to the extensor retinaculum here and then you can also see it here on the T2 so basically same location similar signal intensity changes just a little bit smaller and this was the left side and the same patient had the same finding also on the right side so just a little bit more subtle so now we have another patient with similar findings at the exact same location and this basically renders a lot of the differentials unlikely so maybe you've seen this a few times already at this location it seems to be just there just let me know in the comments below and yeah i hope this was helpful and next time you see an unknown case with low t2 signal you can come up with at least a few differential diagnoses just a quick shout out to my new patron Saurab and also to Susie for increasing uh, her pledge from 10 to 50 dollars a month so thank you very much for your support there and if you want to know more about patreon and how you can support my channel here and get exclusive extra content uh, every now and then then go check the link down below so let me know in the comments down below what you think about this strategy on how to approach an unknown case and with that thanks for watching and see you next time